Hey y'all, my name is Rachel Barber. I'm a board certified music therapist. I got my undergrad degree in music therapy from the University of Louisville in Kentucky. And then I completed my internship at Arkansas Children's Hospital in Little Rock, Arkansas. I am currently finishing up my master's of music therapy in Florida. And while I'm here, I've been working at a private practice called Healing Hearts Music Therapy. I am getting ready to move to Charlotte and start a new job in July at a children's hospital in Charlotte, which I am very excited about. So today I wanted to talk about a couple of interventions that I used a lot in the children's hospital and in the medical setting. So the first intervention that I think I used the most would be improvisation. Improv is wonderful. Um, honestly, it kind of terrified me at first. I didn't think I would be, I guess, good at facilitating it. However, I had found it to be one of the most helpful to tools to use when working with my patients. It's really great for young kids as well. It can work with adolescents, but I have found that sometimes adolescents want to do things the right way and they're really focused on if they're doing things correctly, which in improv, there's not really a right or wrong way to do things. You just kind of play the instruments. Um, so it's not always super effective with adolescents, but it can be. Uh, but for my kiddos, this was something that I would build in. A, I would bring in a lot to build rapport. So some good things about improv, especially in the pediatric medical setting, is that it sets your patients up for success. It's hard for them to do something wrong when you literally cannot do anything wrong. <laughs> it also builds rapport with your patient because it's making them feel successful. So you've brought in all of these instruments that they may have never played before, and yet what turns out is awesome and they feel really proud of themselves. Also, this is something that's really engaging. I found generally when I walk into young kids' rooms, I get the response of, I've never played instruments before. I don't know what I'm doing. So just giving them an instrument and then setting them up to be successful is awesome. And they're super engaged by that. They get super excited and it makes for a really great session. So some of the instruments that I use the most when I am doing improv-based sessions or an improv-based intervention um, are the tongue drum, drums, bells, xylophone, and piano. A lot of times I lean towards instruments where my patients can play a pentatonic scale and I can accompany them with guitar. However, that's not always the case, especially with your younger kids, if you hand them a piano, let's face it, they're going to play all the keys. It's very rare that a kiddo is just going to play the black keys because you told them to just play the black keys. Um, but that can also be a really great thing too. Um, that's where I go from accompanying with a guitar maybe to backing them up with a drum. And that's another great thing about improvisation is that it can be structured or unstructured. So in any case, it can go fairly well. It just depends on what the patient needs. For example, if I have a kiddo that is like bouncing off the walls and so excited and jazzed, this is one where I will really insert myself and kind of facilitate a little bit more directly than I would with a kid who's maybe a little bit nervous. Um, with kids who are a little bit nervous, I try and give them control of the session and let them do what they feel comfortable doing and give them that autonomy. Um, but that's not always the case. And sometimes we have some kiddos that need a little bit more structure. Um, so improv is very adaptable, um, which should sound obvious, but it's not until you get into the moment that you realize how well it works with just about anything. So this is the intervention that I like to use the most with young kids. As far as working with adolescents, I like to use the ukulele. The ukulele is wonderful. It's super easy to learn, super quick to teach. And let's face it, you can teach them three chords and they know about, you know, 10 million pop songs. <laughs> um, but I really like to pair ukulele with songwriting. 
So following teaching the ukulele, you've automatically built some rapport because it's a very easy instrument to learn. So in a 20, 30 minute session, they should be able to effectively play chords unless they need some sort of adaptment to the instrument. So after you've taught them these chords, this is where they get to get creative and they get to think about what they want to play, what kind of styles they like to play, and they get a chance to kind of explore. So after they can effectively play, this is where I bring in the songwriting element. Um, something I've done with my patients in the past is I've made like a songwriting worksheet and in this worksheet, I created fill in the blank lyrics, short response, a brainstorming activity, and they can just use what they want of it to help them move in a good direction and just start the songwriting process. The reason I use songwriting so much with adolescents is because it's a good way to indirectly indirectly discuss what they're going through. Sometimes adolescents can have a wall and they can feel like a closed book. Um, I always thought that lyric analysis would work really well with almost all of my adolescents. And I actually didn't find that to be the case um, when I was working in children's hospitals. I was kind of surprised, but of course I had to figure out something else that was gonna work differently. And so I found that if I let my patients write their own lyrics and we can have a discussion based off of what they're writing, that's a lot more effective than asking them to explain how they're feeling about someone else's lyrics and someone else's story. And obviously being in a hospital, especially for a longer amount of time, it can be a really traumatic experience and looking back, there could be a lot of anxiety or disappointment or frustration with what happened at the hospital and what had happened to them to get them to that point. And so being able to send them with something that they can be proud of, a product, a song that they wrote, that they can take away from that experience also helps them to look back and think about at least some of the positives or when they're looking back and they're really struggling, they can at least look back and think, oh, well, I did get something out of it. You know, it wasn't all horrible because I mean, let's be honest, being in a hospital absolutely sucks. So I really try and bring in something that makes it a little less sucky for them. So in order to do this, um, in addition to the worksheets, I like to record them playing the ukulele. And then I also like to record their vocals and then after I have that all set up, I use um, a software like Pro Tools, which my hospital had paid for on a laptop, um, which it's super expensive, but GarageBand works just fine. I've used that before too. And then I like to bring it in and show them what it sounds like and make sure they're satisfied. And then we start building on it. So then I start asking them a series of questions like, do you want another guitar? Do you want it to be acoustic, electric? Do you want a bass line? Do you want drums? Do you want some reverb? Things like that to help it become the song that they want it to be. And so giving them autonomy over what their song sounds like, I'm just there to help them figure it out and press the right buttons. So I just, I found that that's also a really great coping mechanism. Um, I've had some uh, patients of mine who had left the hospital and came back with songs that they had written. Um, I've had patients who had framed the lyrics that they had written on their walls back home in their room. So it's, it's a really great outlet um, for teenagers who might not have much of an outlet or might not be able to use the coping strategies they would typically use outside of the hospital. So those are the interventions that I use the most in the children's hospital. Thank you for listening. Um, if you have any questions at all about working in the pediatric medical setting, um, my information is below and you can feel free to contact me.